Are you seeking fulfillment for your life? Do you want freedom from fear? That's why we're here. Welcome to Jesus 101. Introducing you to the real Jesus. And now, here's your host, Elizabeth Talbot. Welcome to Jesus 101. I am so happy that you have decided to join us for this particular program. We're doing a whole series on radical discipleship, and we have called it Ordinary People Accepting Extraordinary Grace. And today we are talking about a disciple that, mm, I don't know, I mean, who would have chosen a person like this? Well, Jesus did, obviously, but, you know, we can say, well, yeah, maybe somebody has a big mouth like Peter, Jesus could do something with, and maybe somebody that had anger issues like John and wanted to bring fire from heaven, and Jesus would say, okay, I can deal with that one, and maybe even James, who was a little, you know, he wanted the throne, and he wanted the crown, and he, and other people like that, but Matthew, Levi Matthew, he was a public sinner. It was like if Jesus would have invited a prostitute to be a disciple. And so that's why I'm so excited you joined us because maybe you thought you went too far and Jesus doesn't want you and I have news for you. Matthew says, surprise! God wants somebody exactly like you. So today we're going to start a little bit with some of my toys here so that you can remember our uh, topic today. It is Matthew, Levi Matthew, who was a tax collector. Now, if you are an IRS agent and uh, looking at this program, we're not talking about this type of, IR, uh, of tax collector. Now, this was a particular word in the Greek that we're going to tell you about in a little while. It was not the land taxes or anything like that. These were taxes that were very subjective. Like if you had merchandise, the person, the tax collector could look at it and say, mm, that weighs so much and you have to pay this much. And, and so that's why people hated them because these tax collectors had actually turned against their own people, helping the Romans at the time. But you know, it's like they had two boxes, you know? Yes, you have to pay 10 talents for that. And so they would put 10 talents, but when in fact it could have been eight because it was a subjective appraisal. So they would put a little bit here and every tax collector had this other little box that was their box. And they would put a little bit in that one. So they were always rich at the expense of other people. So these were people that you would never say, okay, I need an elder from our church. Uh, I need a teacher for, to teach the Bible. Oh, yes, I'm going to be calling this tax collectors. No, these were people that were known for their shady dealings. And can you believe that one day, as Levi Matthew was sitting on his post, Jesus walked by. He said, follow me. And I'm sure Matthew looked behind him because he thought he was talking to somebody else, but he wasn't. What can God do with people that have been known to be public sinners, people that have been known to be prostitutes or or drug addicts or drug dealers or murderers or, you know, people... They have a reputation that you barely know their name and you just know what they've done. You know, when you say, hey, there's adulterer, that's the jailbird over there. Maybe you're one of those people that had, well, some bad times and maybe you were abused when you were a kid and didn't even have a chance. At the foot of the cross, what happens with people with shady dealings? What does Jesus have for all of us that have made big mistakes? Not just little ones, but very noticeable ones. Well, I am so glad, like I said, that you have joined us because we are going to talk about Levi Matthew and we're going to do that with somebody that has a lot to um, say about it and is our invite invitee in every single program this a series and is Pastor Mike. Tucker, who is the director and speaker for Faith for Today. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. We are so happy that you are 
here with us because you deal with a lot of people that have gone through difficult, yes. difficult things because yeah. you are also a counselor. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing though to be able to tell people that regardless of the mistake, hmm. God is there for you and the gospel is for you. Wow. And no matter how big that mistake was, the gospel is for you. Yeah, but do you think everybody gets that message? No, no. And I tell you, when it's even harder is when you're the person who's being told the message because you've made the mistake, then all of a sudden you think, are you sure? I mean, that's just it too good be to be that, true. Uh, you Could don't know not how be how many times yeah. people have told me yeah. that the gospel is too good to be too true. Too good to be true. Yeah. It, there's no possible, it, yeah. it can't be that good. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is that God is not only that good, He's better than that because I don't have the words to tell you how good He is. He's better than I can tell you that he is. Well, actually, if I, I, I like when uh, some of these uh, Christian writers say, if grace is not sounding outrageous yeah. and crazy, yeah. you're not preaching the gospel. You're not preaching it hard Because enough. grace yeah. is outrageous and is crazy. Yeah. In you know? fact, as a preacher, I know that unless people are angry with me over what I've said about grace. <laughs> you haven't preached the gospel. I haven't preached the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have the same rule. Yeah. So when people are getting angry with me because yeah. they're saying it's, 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 it's too good. Too good. I'm going, yeah. I I'm getting close yeah. now. I'm getting close. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, that's, really, right. that's really the, the only thing you can hope to do is to get close. Yeah. Because I don't have the words to tell you exactly how good Jesus is. Exactly. I, I don't have those words. I'm not that smart. We don't have who, the language. Who does have to, that yeah. language? No yeah. one does. Exactly. But when I when people get uncomfortable yes. with the goodness of God, all right, now I'm scratching the surface. Yes, I'm getting closer. <laughs> yeah. I'm smelling it. I'm That's smelling right. grace already. That's right. Well, um, you know who Tony Campolo is, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, Wonderful there, Christian writer. There is a, a, he calls himself a sociologist. Yes, he's a and, sociologist. And a preacher. Professor. Yeah, exactly. This morning, as we were preparing the, the program and I was uh, heading over here, I said, I have to watch this story again because we're going to tell it now. And it's Tony Campolo's story. It's his own personal experience. Mm -hmm. And at four o'clock in the morning, I went to YouTube and I watched him <laughs> tell it. And I was, you know. It, I was sleeping at four in the morning. So I'm glad you that you were? did. Yeah, I'm glad you did this. <laughs> well, somebody has to do the, the homework Somebody had to do here, the homework. Right? It was better that you did it and I got some sleep. <laughs> there you go. Well, now what happens is, is a fantastic story. And the story mm -hmm. uh, starts in Hawaii. And he says that. He, you know, he went to do a, whatever he does, a talk, a mm -hmm. preach in Hawaii. And the time change is terrible. And, yeah. you, and you know about that because oh, you yeah. travel. You were telling me yesterday you were like in Dubai and mm -hmm. then. And, West coast of the uh, United then you, States and then Jamaica. Yeah. And, uh, so we know what that feels like. Well, he was there and he was awake at 3.30 in the morning. So mm -hmm. he finds this little spot to buy some to buy something to eat mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's a weird little place but it's the only thing open at 3 yeah. 30 in the morning yeah. so he goes in and asks for i don't know a cup of coffee or something and a and a, a greasy donut he uh -huh. says, or something uh or a bagel i remember what it was and then all of a sudden all these women prostitutes mm -hmm. came in come in together at 3 30 in the morning here yeah. he is tony campola in this place mm -hmm. with all this uh, mm -hmm. these prostitutes and what happens is that at one point she hears one of the he hears one of the prostitutes say tomorrow's my birthday mm -hmm. and the other one say so what do you want me to do about it mm -hmm. and the woman says no i'm just telling you it's my birthday i mean she says, what, do you want me to throw a party? Mm -hmm. She says, don't hurt my feelings. I'm just sharing it with somebody. Yeah. You know? Tony Campolo hears this. This conversation. When, and her name is Agnes. Uh -huh. When she leaves, she, she, he asks the guy, you know, that runs the store, can we throw a birthday party for Agnes tomorrow? Do they come every mm -hmm. night at 3.30 in the morning? Mm -hmm. And he says, sir. That is the greatest idea, <laughs> and we're going to make the cake, and we're and we're gonna. And Tony Campolo says, "I'm gonna decorate the place. Is that okay with you?" Yeah. So let's start this story. Yeah. I'm gonna do this. Uh -huh, good, good. I brought one for you. Um, okay, I'll set that right over here. <laughs> you don't want to wear my no, crown? No, no, I'm not interested in wearing that. Uh, you but know, what's up? I, I mean, look, how I look we gonna... silly enough without this. <laughs> Fine. Here we go. How yeah. about, can you help me hang the I'd banner? I'd be delighted to okay. hang the banner. All yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. imagine this. <laughs> the whole place in uh -huh. the middle of Hawaii. Yes. Tony Campolo putting all of this up, yes. right? 
There we go. Uh, that's as much as you're going to do. That's, that was pretty close. Well, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. And he does the whole thing at 3.30. In the morning, yeah. The, they come in. Yeah. And the word had gotten out, so all the prostitutes in that island were there mm. waiting for Agnes. Mm. When Agnes comes in, everybody yells, surprise! <laughs> And, and he says that she started shaking and her legs started shaking and, and, and she, was, she was beside herself. Yeah. And they said, blow out the candles. And she couldn't because she was crying. And then, and then they said, cut the cake at least. You know, somebody blows the candles for her because she's crying. She can't blow the candles. And, and uh, she says, I need to take this home to my mom and show her the cake. She said, well, come on, we got to eat. It's 3.30 in the morning. And, and she says, I live two doors down the street, let me show her what a birthday cake looks like. And, and, and she left with the cake. Yeah. And, and at that moment, she, <laughs> Tony is so funny, says, everything was silent. All this prostitute and me at, yeah. you know, at 3.30. <laughs> and I don't know what to say. And God just puts it in my mouth. Let's pray. <laughs> so he says, we prayed. Hmm. And when we were done, the guy says, you told us you were a sociologist, and here you are a preacher, and you didn't tell us you were a preacher. And, and he says, what church do you preach for? Mm -hmm. And he says, in one of those moments that God gives you something to say, yeah. that you don't know where you came from, he said, I belong to a church that throws parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> and the man said, no, you don't. If a church like that existed, I would join it. Wow. And then Tony Paul says, that's the type of church Jesus came to put together. That's the truth. Isn't to it? throw parties for prostitutes and tax collectors, to know mm -hmm. that they're accepted and there's worth in them. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I don't know who invented the other church. Yeah. <laughs> that well, it wasn't, it wasn't Jesus, was it? It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't Jesus. Isn't that an amazing yeah. story? I it just love that story. story. love that story because this is what happened to Levi Matthew. Nobody would have chosen. No. Matthew. No, uh, the the two the two uh, groups of people that were most despised would be prostitutes and, and tax collectors, and actually tax collectors were worse than the prostitutes. It was also deemed that a prostitute was had committed an unpardonable sin because in order to be forgiven in the Jewish system, not only did you repent, but you had to make restitution. And how do you make restitution? How, how does a prostitute make a restitution? A tax collector is more likely to be able to, to make restitution. To be able to give some of the... Yeah, yes, yeah. because he's got the money. Exactly. But the prostitute, what do you do? What do you do? But, uh, but Jesus created a church <laughs> for people that broken that disgusting in, in the eyes of, of, of other people. A polite society. Yes. He made a church for those people, which means th that we all fit right in. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And, and this is my greatest hope. And this is why I'm a radical <laughs> preacher of the gospel because I don't see uh, people going out there saying, hey, mm. yeah. This is Everybody the church in. Jesus created. Yeah. You know, uh, we have uh, Don, Dan Jackson is, is our boss in mm -hmm. some ways, right? Yeah. And he says that sometimes when he's preaching the gospel, uh, one time this one guy said, you want to save everybody, mm -hmm. yelled from the audience. Yeah. And he says, well, so does God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, some people are offended yeah. by the fact that people are accepted. Yeah. You know, if the gospel's not good enough for tax collectors and prostitutes, and let's, let's talk about today. How about pedophiles? Exactly. You know, and we can go on down the list of- Sex of, addicts. Yes, of anyone you want to add in there today, the gospel is for them as well. Exactly. Uh, because truthfully, in God's eyes, one sin is no worse than the other. It's yes. all the same thing. We all have fallen short of the glory of God and are justified as a gift. Yes, but God's grace is sufficient, not just for my sins, exactly. and your, but for Everyone's. Everybody. Everyone's. Yeah. Wow. So let's look a little bit about uh, um, about this character whose name was Matthew, Levi mm -hmm. Matthew. You can read when he was called in Luke chapter 5, verses 27 to 29. And the word in Greek that I want to tell you is, is telonis. Telonis was not the regular tax collector like um, 
tax on, on a particular land or anything like that. This is where the subjective, is, is, it was indirect taxation is called, uh, examine goods, mm -hmm. examine things mm -hmm. that, you know, exports, slave transport, yeah. that type of thing, and say, okay, you gotta pay. Yeah, and you can name your price, if you're, if, because you've got the force of the Roman army behind you. Exactly. You can name anything you want. There's no wonder that these yeah. tax collectors yeah. always had And very often those positions were put up to bid for the, to the Roman government. Exactly. The highest bidder got it, and exactly. so that meant that you lined your own pockets to pay exactly. back what you, you bid. And you know, Jesus came with this type of church that blew everybody's mind. And and one day it said that tax collectors and prostitutes will go off ahead of the religious people. Mm -hmm. And this is in Matthew chapter 21. And it's uh, verses 31 and 32 that, uh, you know, he's telling a, 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 a parable about two sons. One said that I'm not going to yeah. go, and then he goes, and then one says, I will go, and then doesn't go. And, yeah. and verse 31 is where Jesus says this crazy yeah. thing. He says, which of the two did the will of the Father? And they said, well, the first, because he said he wasn't going to go, yet he went. Uh, Jesus said to them, truly I say to you that, that the tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you. Wow. <laughs> For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe in him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him. Mm. And you, seeing this, did not even feel remorse afterwards so as to believe him. I have a big question here in the middle of our odd line. Why do tax collectors and prostitutes get to the kingdom before the Pharisees? Well, Jesus said they believed. Yes, obviously, obviously, when it's really obvious yeah. we, that our need, yeah. we know our need. The Pharisees don't know their need yeah. that much. If, if you feel like you're a pretty good guy, yeah. then, then repentance is not top on your list. Yes, I mean, but why when, would you need a savior? You, yeah. you need a medal. But when you're robbing people's pockets and, and you're a prostitute or you're a drug dealer mm. or you're a pedophile, it's difficult, you know, yeah, it's to, difficult it. to live life yeah. without knowing the, I, need yeah, I need some help. Yeah. Yeah. And so th these type of people, all of us, when we get desperate, we look for a savior mm -hmm. because there's no way out. Yeah. And you know, the, uh, Luke actually, the gospel of Luke, um, loves to talk about these people. He, he has another one later on that we don't have much time to talk about, but uh, Zacchaeus was yeah. the chief. Chief tax collector. Tax collector. And it's the same word, telonis, but mm -hmm. he is the archi telonis, mm -hmm. chief tax collector. And Jesus also sought him out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like he is, everybody knows the story on top yeah. of the tree and, mm -hmm. and, and said, come down. And everybody's like, seriously? Yeah. yeah. You're going to invite him? him? I yeah. mean, you could invite all of us. Yeah. We're well dressed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and we're nice people. <laughs> we're, we're good church people. We're, we're not Zacchaeus. Yeah. And Jesus said, no, I want Zacchaeus. Yeah. So this was the way that Jesus actually did throw parties for prostitutes at 3.30 yeah. in the morning. He, he went to the house of a tax collector. He ate with uh, with uh, Matthew. Yes. And, and all the, the crowd of tax collectors that came to what, him. Why don't we read that? Sure, uh, let's do that. Let's, let, because when Matthew gets it, that he's accepted, yeah. he decides to throw a party for everybody he knows. And of course, who uh -huh. does he know? In Matthew chapter five, after he's called, He's going to um, actually call all his friends, and, yeah. and and well, we're in trouble because if all these friends are going to come, then you know mm -hmm. all the sinners are going to come. So let's go uh, chapter five of Matthew. Uh, and you mean we're Luke? Gonna we're going to do Luke. Okay, yeah, you have Wait, Luke? is that where it is? Well, it, it, whatever you want to go, we go. All right, let's take a look at uh, at Luke five. In that where okay. the uh, where the uh, the party is, the uh, call sure. of Levi that, Matthew. That would be great. Okay, and verse 29, And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, and there was a great crowd of tax collectors or other people who were reclining at table with them. The Pharisees and the scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Mm. And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are well who need a physician, but mm. those who are I sick. See. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay. I'm going to act this out. So I'm going to stand up. You can stay because you didn't want to wear my crown. No, no, so you, you can know, stay. I'm, and I'm so old, think so about it's this. better for me to sit. Okay. Go. So I am Matthew. Yes. I'm a tax collector, public sinner. Everybody yes. knows this, yep. right? I find a savior. Mm -hmm. I find somebody that <laughs> loves me. Mm -hmm. 
And I want to call everybody, yeah. all the prostitutes I know in yeah. Hawaii and in my in Palestine. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so I prepared the best things, and here I have a few fruits that I brought. Mm -hmm. And so you like my plates? They're shells. Yeah, yeah the, the plates are lovely. Yeah, I ate one of those eat. oranges earlier, and it tasted like plastic. I don't know. Hey, don't give away my props. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. So here, all you right. want to have an orange? I want to have a fig. And yeah. so here we have the full house of Levi, mm -hmm. filled with tax collectors and prostitutes, all. Dining with Jesus. Jesus yeah. And yeah. so um, the Pharisees and tax collectors come because they always come to check it out. Yeah. You yeah. know, and they always, I don't know if you noticed in Luke, they're always grumbling. Yeah. They're not like, oh, great, we're yeah. going to eat with Jesus. No, yeah. they grumble and they start saying, huh, she's here. Yeah. He's here. He's here. Why? And mm -hmm. here's the question mm -hmm. why are you eating? And drinking with tax collectors and, and sinners. sinners. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yes. And wh why did Jesus say he does that? Jesus said, you know, if you, if you don't know that you're sick, you don't need me. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. He if said, you don't I, know you're sick, and that's basically what he's saying, is that I've, I've come to, to, to minister to the sick. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't even know you're sick, exactly. so you're not going to listen to anything I say anyway. Exactly. And when you figure out that you're sick, give me a the, call. <laughs> Give me a call. I, I love that because that's exactly what happened. He yeah. he did this party and and the, the Pharisees and the scribes, you know, are like protesting. They're mm -hmm. always grumbling. In, in the Gospel of Luke, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy because even in Luke chapter 15 with the prodigal son and the, the whole chapter starts when they started grumbling. Yes. Because Jesus was too good. He accepted sinners. Yeah. He, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. And so they're always grumbling and the sinners are going, yeah, we yeah. have a savior. Yeah, they're dancing and in the, the streets. And the Pharisees are grumbling. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we have this extraordinary acceptance, which is the title for our program today, Extraordinary Acceptance, because we are ordinary people who have as accepted an extraordinary yes. grace. And Levi Matthew becomes an evangelist, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in his own family, his own friends. Um, if a church puts down people when they walk in. Mm -hmm. They are not representing Christ. Yeah, that's right. And if you're the person who's walking in being put down, yes. how likely are you to go back and get your family and friends to come to? N not, not at all. You didn't and find see, anything there. See, sometimes I have a hard time when I know people's um, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time saying, okay, I, I would like them to go. I want to invite them to a church. Okay, which church that yeah. I know? It's going to be safe for them. Which one will be safe? And I've, I've had the same thoughts and the same feelings as well. There's some churches I know I'm safe in taking anyone to. And there are other churches I think, nah, not, nah, so not, much. So much. not so much. Yeah. I, it, would, it would concern me to bring someone in there who truly is a sinner yes. because they're going to be condemned. Exactly. Yeah. You know, actually, we have a, an interesting little parable in Luke. And I don't even know if it's in our, yeah, it is in our outline, Luke chapter 18, you know, where, where uh, Pharisees compare themselves with tax collectors and said, we are so much better off mm -hmm. than, than these mm -hmm. people. And after the parable, mm -hmm. it, we are told that Jesus, chose the tax collector versus yes, the Pharisee. Yes. And this is a parable that you might have uh, heard before. It's called the Pharisee and the publican or the tax collector. Mm -hmm. And it, here is this man saying, hey, I'm so good. Yeah. You want to read it? Verse 9 is where it starts. And he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that Look they were righteous. They trusted in themselves yeah. that they were righteous. And viewed others with contempt. There and those go. two, by the way, go hand in hand. When I trust yeah. in myself, I view others with contempt. But uh, two men went up to the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, <laughs> swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all I get. But the tax collector, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And look what happened. I tell you this, the man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself, exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. exalted. This is the reversal of values in, yeah. in light of the cross. Upside down. Upside down. The, the one that said, I am a sinner, yeah. have mercy on me. Jesus says, you know what? He went home justified. justified. Yeah. And, and one day I was talking about this parable and somebody says, well, but when you know you're justified, you're going to change. You're, you're going to get better, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, mercy uh, will transform general, yeah. 
In general, yeah. But there's one little thing. Will his prayer, when he gets better, yeah. ever change? Yeah. Will his prayer ever be, that of the I am so Pharisee? happy that you saved me, and now I I'm fast good. twice a week, and I give tithes, yeah. and I'm not like other people. Yeah. Will his Or prayer, should it always be, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner? The day that your prayer changes, yeah. that day you don't go home that, justified. Yeah, that's right. I, I, people come to me at times and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I, I said, well, you've prayed, haven't you? Well, yes, but you're closer to God than I am. Wow. I said, listen, the one thing that opens the gates of heaven for you mm. is your acknowledgement of your need. Mm. And that's the only thing you need. If you'll go in with that acknowledgement, he will listen to you. If I come to the Lord and say, Lord, Listen to me, after all, I'm a preacher, you know. Yeah, and you and do I, the whole list. I spend my I, whole life, I, I marry them and I bury them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can do all that. And you know what heaven does? Heaven yawns. Yeah, yeah. It yawns, yes. But Anything if, if you come in, or I, or anyone comes in and says, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I need your help, I'm desperate. That's when heaven's gates are open wide. Wide. And, and the King of glory listens to your And you prayer. know what happens? The angels start going. Yes. We have a sinner coming home. It's a party time. It's a party time. It's Party See, time. let me tell you, <laughs> in the Gospel of Luke, there's so many parties that mm -hmm. some people that, that confuse reverence with depression don't want to yeah. read the <laughs> reverence Gospel. Reverence with depression, I like that. Yeah, there's a lot of churches that confuse yeah. reverence, reverence with depression. With depression yeah. I mean, they're not happy people. Yeah. They say, no, it's reverent. Yeah. But, but the Bible never says it's joyless. No. As a matter of no. fact, the Gospel of Luke has so many parties. Mm -hmm. You know, the, sh the, the, the shepherd that loses the sheep mm -hmm. finds it, and what does yeah. he do? Yeah, hey, he throws a party. The one who loses the coin throws yeah. a party. So the, the father of the prodigal throws a party. Yes, see, that's it because this is the way it works. Yeah. Somebody that's lost has come to the Savior. Let's throw a party. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Jesus says, every sinner that comes, yeah. there is a big party, a party. in heaven. The kingdom of heaven <laughs> is going to be a um, long, really big, big party. party. See, and, and what kind of people are going to be jumping up and down? Because the older brother in the prodigal yeah. son parable yeah. is grumbling. Yeah. You accept these people, yeah. Levi Matthew, Archai uh, yeah. uh, Telonis, uh, yeah. chief tax collectors? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm too good. I have been enslaving yeah. in this house yeah. forever. Yeah. And the father said, uh, the other day I went to some place and, and this guy was leading, said evangelistic, um, it, this is an evangelistic principle. Treat antagonistics with respect, but don't let them stop the party. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. Don't and I'm glad, Mike, that you are the type of pastor that you have never allowed anybody to stop, stop the party. party. You don't stop parties. Let's go to the cross as we always do. Just to remind you that what does God do with people like Matthew, with people that have been public sinners or have had a reputation for a while? Well, he gets them really, really, really close to him. He eats with them, which was a sign of intimacy. And it was a problem for the first century church because they would eat together with Gentiles and take the Lord's Supper. Could they with such uh, people? And Jesus says, you people don't get what the kingdom of God is all about. We belong to a church, Jesus says, that throws parties for tax collectors and prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. And if you don't belong to that type of church, then you belong to a different type than the one that Jesus created. We are here because we're sinners and because He is our Savior.